Casio has been conducting a phase two human trial of our lead brain cancer drug, Paxalicin. And we've been looking at the drug in glioblastoma, which is the most common and the most aggressive form of brain cancer. The trial has been running for the past 15 months or so now. We started in late 2018 and we reported some data in uh, November 2019, which looked really encouraging. The data we've got today builds on that really nicely. It gives us some really good confirmation of what we saw previously, but it also gives us some new information, which is really important to us. At a high level, the key data point we've seen is that Paxalicib shows an overall survival of 17.7 months. What this means is that the drug appears to be extending the life of patients with glioblastoma. The only FDA-approved drug for glioblastoma is a drug called temozolomide. It's been around for over 20 years. And in this patient group, temozolomide produces an overall survival of 12.7 months. So it looks like there's a very material improvement associated with treatment with Paxalicib. We recognize that the gold prize for any new cancer drug is to extend patients' lives. That's really what we're trying to do. Now, there are many, many FDA-approved cancer drugs out there that don't meet that hurdle. But I think this data gives us some real, uh, some real confidence that Paxalicid may be able to do just that. So the figure we're seeing, again, 17.7 months versus 12.7 months for the existing therapy, that really looks like a, a great improvement. We'll be seeing more as the study continues to evolve as it moves towards its completion, but so far, this is, this is really fantastic news. Last November, we reported our first efficacy readout from this study, and we had some great results there. We saw a progression-free survival of, of 8.4 months. Progression-free survival is really a measure of the drug's ability to delay the recurrence of the disease. And the figure of 8.4 months was very exciting because it compared extremely favorably with 5.3 months, which is the, uh, the progression-free survival that results from treatment with temozolomide. The data we've put out recently uh, improves on this in two ways. First of all, we've recalculated that progression-free survival with the benefit of more patients in the study. And the really reassuring thing that comes out is the number really stays about the same. It actually improves slightly. It's now 8.5 months. So that gives us a great deal more confidence that as we add more patients into the analysis, the figure is holding rock steady. And that's great. It gives us a, a, a real sense that this data is robust. I think this means three things for the future development of Paxalicib. The first thing is it gives us some really welcome reassurance that we are on track to, uh, to address a very appreciable commercial market. Temozolomide, the existing drug, the existing standard of care, was a billion dollar a year product in its heyday. And that gives us a sense of what the commercial opportunity is here for Paxalicib. And I think with the results we're starting to see, it really reaffirms to us that, that our drug is a serious contender to address that market. And so I think that's, that's very reassuring in a business sense. The second thing I think uh, this data is helpful for is that it really validates our decision to move forward into a pivotal study with Paxalicit. We announced back in December that we joined an international clinical study called GBM Agile which is designed to provide data for registration for new drugs in glioblastoma. It's run by some of the top clinicians in the world in this disease, uh, and it's very heavily supported by FDA, and we think it's the perfect way forward for Paxalicid. And we, uh, we were welcomed onto that study in December after a review by their scientific committee, partly on the basis of the data we previously shared. This new data, I think, really helps to provide, again, a much greater level of confidence around that. And we're moving uh, at full speed ahead on GBM Agile, still with a view to recruiting patients in the second half of calendar 2020. And then finally, I think part of what this means as well is that there have been no new drugs for glioblastoma for almost 20 years, at least for this group of patients. This is a disease where the outlook for patients has really not improved in the last two decades. 
And we aspire to change that in Casia. It's part of what drives us in the company. And I think the fact that we're starting to see that prize appear over the horizon is incredibly encouraging for all of us in the company as professional drug developers. Uh, and uh, I think this means a lot to us to, to think that we're on to something. Given the uncertainty in capital markets right now, we thought it was prudent and sensible to take the opportunity just to shore up the company's balance sheet. Uh, quite a few ASX companies, large and small, have been doing the same thing in the last few weeks. And we really want to make sure that we can carry on with the work we're doing without the distraction of having to worry about the financial environment. So I think what, what the recent financing achieves for us is a couple of things. Firstly, it sees us through three or four more data readouts through calendar 2020. So there'll be really a lot more value driving data coming out of the program as, as we move through the year. It lets us uh, continue set up work on the GBM Agile study, our planned pivotal study at full pace. And I think that's very important. We don't want to waste any time there. And as I say, it lets us get on essentially with what we do best, which is drug development. So, uh, so I think it's been really helpful that we've uh, had the support of our investors to make sure the company's in robust condition, no matter what comes. We're now very well set up to weather the storm and uh, we can get on with the work. In terms of the COVID-19 outbreak, we've already taken some measures at Casia to make sure that our business continues uninterrupted. We moved all our staff to home-based working and canceled all travel and went to purely virtual meetings way back actually at the end of February. Uh, at an operational level, I think we're, uh, we're in a fortunate position in many ways that our key clinical trial, the phase two study of Paxalisib, is fully recruited. So we're not looking for new patients right now. And that's often one of the things that's affected first in these sort of situations. We are seeing some minor operational disruption at, at certain hospitals. Um, but really that's more in the nature of affecting our ability to get in and, and check data and things like that. These are not time sensitive activities. They're things that can be done remotely and virtually. So at this stage, we don't uh, see any indication of any material disruption to timelines, cost, or the viability of the, the data we see from our studies. But like every company, we're watching this closely. Uh, but uh, at the moment, we're, uh, we're in good shape to, to continue with what we're doing. These are uncertain times, clearly, but I think in Casio, we benefit enormously from incredibly supportive shareholders and fantastic support from the patients and the researchers that participate in all our work. That work continues. It remains just as important today as it ever has been. And we've focused our eyes on the, the long-term prize of bringing in new treatment to patients with brain cancer. We'll be continuing that work as the year progresses, and we'll be keeping all our shareholders regularly informed through virtual methods, uh, such as videos and uh, other, uh, other opportunities. So there's an exciting year ahead for Casio, and uh, we'll be looking forward to sharing that with everybody.